Welcome to the Hip Hop Hustle podcast. I'm with the great Johnny Slash. And the way you know it's Johnny is every single track that he's on, well, I think 99% of the tracks start with... And it's the best. It's the Homer Simpson um, saying, here's Johnny, and I love it. It's one of those iconic um, monikers and the starts that I absolutely love. But if you're not fully aware of Johnny, um, he's, you, you're mostly into production, but you've also been doing rhymes, um, and you've you've been doing it all since about 2015. Um, and new tracks just dropped, Ski Mask and fuck your favorite rapper as well with Jaron Benton and Demrick on those. And your most recent album was also Nicholson, um, obviously an inspiration from Jack Nicholson and the shining there. You can see it in the cover, but man, it's absolutely a pleasure to have you on the show. Word, man. Thanks for having me on, bro. Um, well, speaking of the tag, I got that look. <laughs> Bing bong. <laughs> right there had it ready you had it ready um, i might have to cut it and throw it in the beginning of the show just to give you hey man that'd be some, cool too <laughs> some recognition in there as well um but yeah i absolutely love it like where did you come up with it because oh uh, like, the beat tag yeah um so when i first started making beats um man i I just posted a story of when and how and where can't remember exactly the year, but, um, when I first started making beats, uh, my boy, um, stir crazy, he was like, dude, you should make a tag on your beats, come up with a tag. I was like, cool. And then automatically I thought of like a sword sound, you know, like unsheathing a sword or something. And then, you know, here's Johnny, of course. Um, I didn't want to use the here's Johnny from the movie because um, I don't know, it would work now. But back then I was like super OCD about having sounds in the background for the tag. And in the movie, I, I believe there's music in the background. Um, so I didn't want to use the here's Johnny from the movie. So I just looked up on YouTube. Here's Johnny. And I was going through all the different like, you know, videos and i found one of homer simpson and i was like that's cool as shit so i was like let's just do homer simpson man fuck it i actually think weirdly it works better with homer simpson yeah like i don't know there's something there's a tone that he gets in it that's like kind of cool and kind of creepy all at the same time and also yeah. like the shining is such a recognize it's like almost too recognizable as a movie that like mm -hmm. everyone knows you got it from there. But like now when people listen to it, it's like maybe they haven't heard this version of it before. So they recognize the reference. So I think it's like a cool middle ground of like, you've got the reference and you've got like the change on it. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah, man. So yeah, that's why I use the, uh, the Homer Simpson vocal instead. And it, just turns out to be good you know everyone's like is that homer simpson i'm like yeah it is <laughs> do you feel like you know tags for like you know beat makers and producers like do you feel like they're a necessity right now like because it's quite difficult to to get recognition or i i saw you shaking your head for anyone who's listening uh to the to the audio version but um why don't you think that's the case? Um, I don't think it's a necessity. To be completely honest with you, when you're trying to get placements, it's actually really fucking annoying. Like, let's say I send uh, an artist like 20 beats to check out, and he's going through them, and every time he hears fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, it can get pretty fucking annoying. Matter of fact, like, I just sent beats to an artist and he told me uh, it's a group project. I can't really say who it is, but um, he told me, yo, like, I have a weird question. I'm like, what's up? He said, can you send me beats for this project with so-and-so? And I was like, uh, yeah, of course. Like, why is that a weird question? And he's like, well, here's the weird part. I need you to take out all your tags because one of the artists is thrown off by hearing tags on the beat. And then whenever we play something, you can put them back in. I'm like, Okay, cool. And then uh, another person who told me, 
was uh, Nems. <laughs> Nems was <laughs> Nems was like, bro, what's with the fucking tag? This shit's mad annoying. <laughs> you know, because he's going through the email and every time it's like, shling, shling, shling. He's like, bro, what the fuck? So it definitely isn't a necessity. But when you're posting your beats online all the time, it, it definitely does help to kind of have that, you know what I mean? Become part of your trademark. And uh, fans, uh, they kind of gravitate towards the here's Johnny. You know what I mean? If I ever see any of them in public or at a show, they're always like, here's Johnny. And I'm like, yo, what's up? You know? Well, say it's weird because I think as a fan, I feel like it is a necessity because like, I want to be able to recognize your work quickly. Like I literally just want to be like, I know who made this beat in the same way that I know who the artist is on the song. But obviously when you work with the artists themselves, like it is weird though. I didn't expect an artist to be like, uh, to be thrown off by the tag. Like it's not that crazy to me. Like it's not thrown out throughout the whole song or that throughout the whole beat. So it is surprising that it's, that it throws them off yeah and if you're a producer definitely don't put it throughout the whole beat i know a lot of producers are worried about getting their beats stolen but they're gonna get stolen regardless it there's nothing you can really do about it like people will rap over your tags anyway like they don't care um you know people will rip your beats off youtube or whatever platform you have them on and just rap on them and um it's really not that big of a deal. There's nothing you can do to stop it. Uh, you know, if somebody does rip your beat off YouTube and make a song with it and it gets like mad views and you're like, what the fuck? All you have to do, let's say you upload to YouTube every time you make a beat like I do. All you have to do is report their video for copyright. If it's on Spotify, you can report it for copyright. Put your YouTube link as like the example of the copied work. And they'll take it down. I've had to do it a couple of times. Do you ever get but, um, compensation huh? for something like that? Like, like yeah, it really if goes. Like, if they get like a ton of streams, um, I think what they do is they either take it down or in the description of the YouTube, it'll be like, um, it'll say like, "This is my song." And then whatever they get, like whatever streams they get, go into my AdSense account. I think that's how it works. I don't exactly remember. I haven't had to do it in a while, but yeah. So don't, especially if you're sending beats to, you know, you're trying to get a placement, don't have the tag throughout the whole beat, you know? I don't think it's that bad if someone rips your beats. Like it's annoying to deal with, but it also gets your kind of sound into different audiences. Yeah. It's it's really only annoying if they try to stream it because then you'll get like a notification. Like if I upload a B video on Instagram, I've been, Oh my God, I have a crazy story. So like if I try to upload a beat video on Instagram or like, let's say, I had a beat video on Instagram. Somebody stole the beat and they put it on Spotify or all the streaming services through DistroKid or whatever um, uh, distribution. Uh, It will flag my Instagram video saying this is copyright, blah, blah, blah. And oh, my God, I just had a huge problem, but it's dealt with now. Thank God what was happening was some weirdo. I don't know who it is, but apparently distro kid told us that he was, I was the only one he was stealing work from and uploading on Spotify. But basically what happened, somebody made a new Johnny slash on Spotify and uploaded, started to upload all my beats from YouTube onto this new Johnny slash Spotify under the same beat names, different artwork, like brand new artwork. It was so weird and bizarre. And it was really starting to bug me. And um, because here's the thing, if somebody's doing that and you sell that beat to somebody and they try to um, 
distribute the fucking music, it's going to get flagged. So luckily I have uh, my record label, Broken Complex, um, DJ Hoppa, he took care of that for me. He got it taken down um, that day, you know? See, that to me is a different story because that is crazy. Like that's that actually is somebody, like that's somebody pretending to be you and literally stealing from yeah. you as opposed to somebody else who's like, I like the beat and I want to freestyle over it or whatever. Like, I think there's yeah. one is malicious. I think that's totally fine. I, tell, I think that is totally fine when people want to just like freestyle or mess around. I tell people like, yo, like you can rip my beats off YouTube. Just don't distribute it and I'll be cool with it. You yeah. know, because there's nothing you can do to stop it. So you might as well tell them, like, sure, go ahead. I prefer you go buy the lease off my website at least. But hey, man, I get it. Like, I used to do the same shit when I was younger, when I was rapping. I used to fucking jack beats off YouTube all the time. <laughs> you I know, feel like it's part of hip hop. Like, that's what it is. Hip hop is like you take someone else's beat and you make it your own in a weird way. Like, yeah, that's what sampling is. Like there, obviously there's a, a craft to sampling and there is a difference between like, you just take a, like what annoys me right now is the trend to take really successful songs and literally repurpose them into modern songs, but you still know mm. the exactly extremely successful song that it came from. And it's like, yeah. that's different to using an older track that you found changing it significantly and making a brand new beat from it. Yeah, a lot of these, uh, it's really happening in the mainstream where they just sample, like, uh, who was it? They sampled fucking, um, I can't remember it, but they do that because, you know, it has nostalgia and people automatically gravitate towards it. But yeah, it is kind of corny for sure. Like Jack Harlow um, has um, First Class and it samples um, Fabulous by Fergie. And Fabulous. I think it's called Fabulous, but um, it is a, such a like iconic song. But like the reason Jack Harlow's song is so big is because it's going off the back of one of the catchiest songs ever. Like it's super catchy, and it's just yeah. as, like it's like this weird hack. It's like not a. It, it just doesn't feel right as a hip hop fan. I'm like, this isn't. You haven't done enough to it to to like make it significantly different. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. Um, and yeah, back to the stealing beats thing. Like, also back then when I was jacking beats off YouTube, it was literally like I wasn't doing albums, I wasn't selling shit. It was literally just, you know, you're messing around. You know what I'm saying? You're just messing around with a beat you wanted to record. So if people want to do that to my stuff, I don't really mind. But if you plan on distributing it, making music video, whatever, like, yeah, please go to the website and get the lease. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which is good messaging. So, and literally anyone can get the lease off your website as well. Yeah. There's a, what is it called? Like a basic license. Um, there's another license that gives you more uh, permission to do things and then exclusive. So that's basically what I have right now. Well, yeah, I mean, man. if you want to continue supporting artists and you want to support the people that, you know, help make the beats for you, I think you should go buy the license. Like definitely. It, it just continues to, to help support the industry. But how long did it take you to feel comfortable in your beat making to start like, you know, actually throwing it out there and giving it to artists. Um, Oh my gosh. Uh, man, I think I first started messing around with the idea of making beats in, it was either 2011 or 2012. I got, I got fruity loops and started making some trash ass beats I didn't even know what sampling was. Well, I knew what it was, but I didn't really understand how to do it. And I didn't think it was really possible unless you had like a beat machine. I didn't know you could do it on free loops at all. But then, um,
I don't know, bro. It's uh, so when I started messing with Fruity Loops, I was like, ah, this, nah, I, making beats is a whole. I I ain't making beats. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? I was like, this is, this is hard, man. I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. I'm just opening all the different like stock plugins and Fruity Loops, fucking around, making the worst sounding shit ever. Um. Then later on, um, man, there was this program you could download on your computer called virtual dj it was like some little stupid program and you can like put you know you could put a a sound on one deck and then a different sound on another and i was fucking around one day and i, I put drums that i made in fruity loops on one track and then i put a sample and it sounded cool it's like oh shit so this is how sampling works basically do you remember where that, where that sample was from? The first thing I ever flipped was a Nightmare on Elm Street soundtrack. Really? That was the first thing I ever tried to flip. And uh, my homie, one of my best friends, his name is Haffy. Um, this is when we were, we were both messing around with rapping and stuff. And the first beat I ever like actually made I fucking sold it to him. <laughs> He's like, bro, let me give you 50 bucks for that. I'm like, cool. Hell yeah. I'll make more. <laughs> um, but I wasn't selling beats really back then. It took like, man, that was maybe around 2014, 15. When I first like learned how to sample and get it down. Um, in 2000, maybe 2015, 2016. Um, me and him got our own place together. We rented out this trailer in this trailer park. It was infamous for uh, parties, very loud music. Like we just went crazy in there. We fucking destroyed that place. <laughs> <laughs> was it infamous um, because of you guys, or was it infamous yeah, in general? It was just infamous, just because of us. Like we would throw parties, play. My our neighbors fucking hated us. Um, that's around that time when I moved into that trailer is when I started getting serious. I was trying to do more rap albums. Um, and, uh, I wanted to make my own beats and I was still using Fruity Loops at this time, making my own beats and stuff. But, uh, I wanted to invest into an MPC. Like I wanted something hands-on that I could fucking, I wanted to press pads. Like it looked so fucking cool to me. It looked fun, way funner than clicking with a mouse, you know. There's nothing wrong with that, but I wanted something more hands-on. And uh, I was about to get an MPC 2000 XL, which is a pretty old drum machine. But um, my boy was like, dude, you should get the machine. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And he's like, well, I think you should get it because it, it's you're already used to Fruity Loops. And this kind of goes off your computer. It's basically a controller. And I'm like, okay, word. So me and my boy Happy were working at this restaurant at the time. And uh, I had a shitty fucking job. I was a dishwasher for years. It was the worst job ever. My uh, paychecks were not very good. But I saved all that I could, you know, after paying rent and everything for a couple months. And I, I was able to save a thousand dollars, which at the time was like a lot of fucking money for me. Do you remember how uh, long so it I, took? How long it took to save the money? Yeah. It took at least two months, maybe three. Okay. And um, I was like, dude, I'm just going to fucking buy this thing cost a thousand dollars it was the machine studio i was like fuck it i'm gonna pull the trigger and i bought it and i just remember feeling kind of like worried <laughs> you know what i'm saying i just spent all this is the most money i ever spent in my life <clears throat> and i felt excited at the same time so even before the machine um got to me i was watching tutorials trying to learn this shit and when i got it um, you know, I made my first beat on it. Um, 
I am blessed to have some fucking dope producers as friends, even before like my shit started getting good. Like my boy Ruler Y gave me lots of advice. My boy Stir Crazy, um, my homie Foulmouth, my boy Vic Grimes. Big shout out to Vic Grimes, man. He's one of the dopest producers ever. I mean, all of them are, but you know, they kind of helped me. And within the, I think the first like five months, four months, maybe I was making beats and people were starting to pay more attention to me when I was showing off my beats versus when I was rapping. And, um, I was like, man, this is crazy. But also the more, um, the biggest thing that drove me to focus on beats instead of rapping was I enjoyed making beats way more. I hate writing. I fucking hate writing verses. I'm not the best rapper. Um, and I can never think of anything clever to write. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, I just started doing beats, man. And I, I got obsessed. And this is around the time I started learning about like real hip hop, like real ass hip hop. Like I didn't know a lot about hip hop at all. All I knew at that time was like, I want to rap. And I always gravitated towards the boom bap beats. I didn't even know it was called boom bap. I didn't even know that that was like a thing. I was just like, yeah, I like the gr that grimy shit. I just <laughs> considered it grimy, you know? I, I didn't know it was called every, boom bap Everybody at all. describes it at first. It's just grimy, kind of dirty, dark mm. um, beat. But yeah. I also had to learn boom bap, like, cause come from Australia as well. Like I didn't have like the, the terms weren't around. So I found out from a friend, it was called boom bap. And so like yeah. the terms you kind of learn as you go, you just start hearing the way people are describing tracks and the way they're describing new beats. But I, I want to jump back to quickly the feeling you had when you got the, the MPC, when, when it came, cause you spent a thousand dollars, you saved for three months. Like when it came, did you have a feeling? Do you remember the moment you're unboxing it? I think if I remember right, they were having an issue shipping it out. I don't know what happened. I think it might it might have gotten like, I think they shipped it out. And when it got to another uh, post office or whatever, before it got to me, like it got delayed. And I was so pissed. I was like, what the fuck? Just send me my shit. Like I was stressed out, but then it finally came and I was just super excited, man. I remember uh, hooking it up and downloading the software and messing around with it a little bit before work. And uh, yeah, man, I was super excited and I, I kind of fucking, uh, I was super excited to get it and open it. When I plugged it in, I was, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like I was all over the place. I didn't, I was, I was kind of like frustrated with it. And I was kind of feeling a little bit, um, uh, what's that word, man? Discouraged. Like I was feeling discouraged to even use it. Like I was like, Oh fuck. Spent a thousand dollars on this thing. And it's like rocket science. What the fuck, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, you know, I just kept watching tutorials, man. Even tutorials that weren't even boom bap tutorials. Like I watched all the machine tutorials, trap tutorials, whatever. Cause all that shit translates, man. When they teach you how to arrange it and start new groups in the, the program and whatnot. And yeah, man, I started uh doing some shit with it. You know, it's it's real I guess like for for everybody it's like an important lesson of like you know you because at that time in your life like three months is a long time to be saving for something particular like it's a long time it's a long like i almost think the thousand dollars was big at the time but it's how much time and energy and like how many shifts and how much work you actually had to do to save the money only to oh, when yeah. you get it to be like fuck like that like the delays would have been stressful as hell. Like I can only imagine like it's, it's a, it's a long investment that you put in and then to get it and just feel like it's not working. 
Like how long did it take you to learn it, to actually feel comfortable? Oh, to get like comfortable, comfortable, or to like start making beats? Well, let's just, just to feel like I did the right thing. Just to be like, okay, I can kind of see like this is pain. Um, I think a couple of weeks later, I started fi- actually finishing beats on it. And um, yeah, man, I was just like, okay, this is awesome. You know, I, it's, I, I get it now. Like I could see how to arrange things. Um, you know, I could see where to mix and all that shit. And I started finishing beats and I got really fucking excited. And then, um, yeah, that, and then I just fell in love with making beats, man. And I started studying hip, it, like, it's so weird. Cause it felt like hip hop, like all of it just hit me at once. And I became absolutely obsessed. Like I started listening to new shit I never heard before. Started getting crazy, crazy inspired. I started crate digging. Like I went and got a record player and started going to my local record shops, finding records. Like it all hit me at one time. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was like getting to the point where like, I'm going to sell, I want to sell beats. Like, I had this whole website made for selling beats and shit, but um, it was crazy at the time because I still didn't really know how to mix anything and all my beats were clipping like bad out the master channel. (laughs) I didn't know what that meant. And like, they still, like my boys are crazy. He's like, I remember, I think I was FaceTiming with him or we were on the call together. And he was trying to help me do something like I think it was like mixing a baseline or something. And he's like, wait, you're clipping. I'm like, yeah, it's always clipping. What does that mean? He's like, bro, how he told me, how do you get your beats to sound good if it's clipping like that? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I guess I just mixed it while it was clipping as best as possible. I don't know. But then once I learned how to, like, stop it from clipping um limit put a limiter on the master channel to make it louder and presentable for people to hear that's when like shit started really getting exciting because uh you know i was entering a whole new quality and people were really responding to it and um but still my beats weren't the best at uh, at that point like i made some pretty dope beats at that point but well let me ask what what did you mean by clipping Because I know for a fact, I don't know. And if I don't like, and I love hip hop, but the the specifics and you were making beats and you didn't know. So I have a feeling 99% of my audience won't know either, but, but what did you mean? by clipping? I can, uh, I can show you exactly what I mean. I'll turn the camera around, turn this down. Um, I'll show screen here. Cause I was just working on a beat right now. Um, so here's my uh, machine doc. I don't, I don't know how that, how else is going to translate, but uh, here's the master channel, right? That channel, like everything is feeding into that. That's your main output. So like, let's play this beat. Oh, let me turn it up. Well, let me get to like the hook section here. Let me play just this. Now, this meter is below that threshold. If it goes above, that means it's too loud and it's going to distort. Yeah. So, like, let me turn my drums up. You'll see it start to clip. You see how it's red now? Right. See, I I have the same right thing. I have the same thing in audio. Like, as I obviously edit audio, so I can see when it goes too far too far as well. So yeah. So it was just going too high, like it was above the where it should. So for anyone who listened to this, so essentially it was like, you know, the the sound has where it should hit for the the best audio level. And if it reaches too high, it kind of stops the sound. It like gets to a point where it like cuts it off. So you have to like lower the volume. And that's yeah, so that's you, why you he once something's clipping you start kind of losing information in the signal and it just distorts 
And um, yeah, you want to get at the end of the day, when you're done with a beat, you want to give plenty of headroom, enough space so you can put a limiter on it and it won't distort. Um, and also, so when you send it to somebody to rap on, their engineer has enough headroom to master it. Because if you send it to them and it's limited or, if, you know, it's clipping, then, uh, yeah, they're not going to really, you know, be able to add anything to it or change anything. But also the sound bad. And, uh, yeah, man. Um, fuck, I was going to say something. I forgot. Forgot. I was going to say the time. <laughs> Um. Fuck, what was I going to say? It'll probably it'll probably come back to you in the middle of yeah. something else we're talking about. But I do want to ask, like, with engineers, like, do you see a significant difference between, you know, the start, like, what you've sent out and what the engineer makes? Like, can you, can you when you get it back, really recognize the changes that have been made? Yeah. It also, yeah, for sure it's either going to come back sounding like it's going to either sound into your ears bad or it's going to come back sounding like improved. It really depends on the engineer you send it to. I've sent uh, mixes to engineers to mix and master and it'll come back sounding like, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? Like, I don't like the way this shit sounds. And I can tell like the things they did but it just doesn't sound good. But I found a really dope engineer. It's, he's the same engineer that is uh, doing uh, all the Demerick and Jaron Benton tracks right now. He, I uh, hit him up to get some of my work mastered and mixed. And it's coming back sounding crazy, like super dope. So I'm pretty excited. They basically like, the way I do it is like, I love the way my shit's mixed, but I send it off to get polished, you know? Cause there might be some things he's hearing that I'm not hearing that could be better. And basically what he does is he'll take what I sent him, polish it up, send it back. And I'm like, Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. They're like shine it up. Yeah. Add the gloss, you know, they, they make it feel like a brand new car. Like you built it, they just make it like look and feel that way. They add the like special touches. Yeah. Exactly. Is it difficult to when you hear them, when you when you listen to it and it's like, I hate this or I really don't like I think you fucked this beat up. Is it difficult to kind of like get over? Like, cause for me, like I'm putting myself in your shoes and I get attached to the things that I work on. Like there it's me in it. Like that's what it is. And so when someone changes it for the worse, I'm going to be like, it's really hard to accept. Yeah. A, a huge part of it, which I realize when it comes to me is like, you're working on a song for a while. Usually like, let's say I put like today, I probably started this beat at around, um, I don't know, maybe 11 this morning. And then, uh, hold on, I'm getting a phone call. Let me decline that real quick. Are you there? Happens, you yeah, see? happens all the time. It's it's let like Murphy's law. Real quick and let her know that I'm in the interview so she doesn't keep calling because my homeboy's girl is trying to call me. I don't know why. but uh, It's always Murphy's law that. that like, when I'm doing an interview, you're guaranteed to get a phone call, a text, something's going to go. It's just, you kind of get used. Yeah. To I already it. got two phone calls while during this interview. Like, yeah, I only get phone on calls when second, I'm busy. Let me, just, let me just reply to her real quick. No, good. Yeah. I only get phone calls when I'm busy. Like literally if I'm doing something or if like I got shit to do, that's when I get like 10 phone calls or especially when I'm getting like, when I'm going to see the barber or get a haircut, like that's the time I'm never going to answer my phone. And then it's always blowing up. So I, 
I kind of feel you the whole time. Yeah. Fuck. What was I saying before that? About the the engineer. Um, and then when it comes back and you're not as pleased with it. Yeah. When you're not as pleased with it, man, it's kind of hard to let them know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just got to be brutally honest. So, I don't know. I've had shit come back. And I just told him, I was like, man, I'm not, I'm not really liking the way it sounds. I don't know what it is, you know? And I don't know. It's a process, man. You just got to find a really good engineer that um, you like. You know what I mean? And I think it's, you know, have a good relationship with them as well. Cause like, as you said, like in, in the same vein, they put in part of their soul, like they're being into it as well. And so like, it, it would also be hard for them to like hear that critique come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 100%. Um, but yeah, man. Is it this, uh, new engineer i'm working with he's a dj overtone he's been killing it man all the tracks um all the jaren and uh damrick tracks sound great and uh the tracks i've sent him they come back sounding great too so i'm really excited how did you get in touch with jaren and damrick like how was that because obviously you're you've released two tracks right now i'm assuming you got more in the pipeline but i think we have three songs out but one of them isn't connected to my spotify um it's called uh left hand side featuring be real from cypress hill so they 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 wanted to put him in the because on on spotify you can only have three main artists so they put you know them and then be real of course because you know it's gonna get more plays if we do that so I was cool with it. I was like, sure, just you know, put me as a featured artist, whatever. So yeah, we have three songs out right now. We're dropping a fourth one this month. And then I think we're uh, shooting to drop the album soon. But um, yeah. How big is the album going to be? I think right now it's... 13 or 12 songs and since we're dropping four of them as singles uh, i think i i think demerick said something about wanting to do a couple more that way when it comes out there's 10 unheard songs total at least so yeah i feel like that's that's a good amount it's weird with album lengths these days because like it's a cat. It's like you got to find the right, get enough people to want to listen to it. But then, like, I feel like attention spans these days are not there for like you know twenty track albums. You got to have like the the right length. And if you know your album, like I listened to Sahai, he dropped uh, like a an EP and a mixtape. It was like four tracks, but one of his songs was like six and a half minutes. And I was like, mm. I know that most people are gonna be like, nah, it's too long. Yeah, it's got to be super, super dope. And Sci High is super dope, so I'm sure it worked for him. But um, the same thing with long ass albums. Like you got to be fucking dropping crazy shit. Like you can't just be filler. You know what I mean? That's why I also think that way though towards short albums and EPs and shit. Because like a lot of people are just doing EPs right now. He dropping mad EPs like eight track you know records and shit and that's fine too but it better be dope because if it's all corny or whack then it's like dude you only dropped eight songs and they're all corny i agree it's like it's the other or way not, around if it's sure at least not up to par you know what i mean like we know you could do better what the fuck yeah if it's short and it doesn't hit then it's like you couldn't even do this correctly like yeah how do you feel about yeah. how, how do you feel about tracks that have two beats in them? I've noticed a, a, a common trend oh, is two beats. Like it literally switches from one to the other. Um, I have is my that own a trend take right on. Now? Yeah, I've seen 
quite a few. Oh, man, I'm like, excited, bro, because I, <laughs> I didn't know that was a trend right now. I have a track uh, with Afro that kind of does that. It was meant to be like a 16 of him rapping, and then the beat switches completely, transitions into another beat, and then he spits another 16. But um, uh, he asked me if he could use the verse from the first track on his album, and I was like, yeah, man. I'll just shorten this and make it an intro that switches up into this song. And uh, I had this shit on my computer for like two years, this Afro song. And I never uh, got around to finishing it. But the other day I was like, I need to put it out. So I figured I was going to arrange it and make it um, as good as possible for what it is, even though it's kind of short. But in a split decision, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to record on it. And I'm going to try to match Afro's flow on it. And I did. And it turned out awesome. And I'm super fucking hyped to release it for everybody. Do you have a release date for it? Um, Either September or the next month. So pretty soon. Probably this pretty podcast soon. might drop around about the, the time it comes out. So... Oh. Hell yeah. So good timing. But yeah, but do you do you have a take on, you know, having two beats in one track? I think it's fucking dope. I think it's super cool. You know, I didn't know it was a trend. I thought it like it was uh, something that wasn't happening very often. I had no clue. Because I think um, it started I think in Kendrick's Good Kid Mad City. Like here's a couple of tracks that like the beat switches halfway through. And then oh, people okay. were starting to change, like take that. And my, the, my take on it though is like that both beats have to be dope. Because yeah, like, because be like I've heard tracks where I love a beat so much more than the other one. Like, yeah. Um, I think what was it? Um, Didn't MF Doom do that with a gazillion ear? Yeah, I think he did. Um, I know Drake did it, I think, with Champagne Poetry, um, with a song. It has such a cool sample, and then the beat switches, and I'm like, go back to the first one. The first one has an amazing sample that I want to hear all the time, and it, like, ruins yeah, wanna, the song. Longer. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. For the Afro track, um, they're both older beats. Um, the beat that we rap on is... Also on my uh, Oops All Bangers beat tape called uh, the track. The beat is called Garbage, and that's what the song is going to be called, too. And, um, yeah, the first beat where it was like an intro. People are going to dig it, I think, but it's not my favorite beat ever. So I felt like it was the perfect transition. You know what I mean? Like you hear this. It kind of just starts like nonchalantly and then it breaks down and then you just hear this crazy fucking beat with the bass just fucking booming and it's like what the fuck you know it's like a really good transition and um yeah people are gonna fucking lose their mind i think hopefully when they hear it well i don't mind a fake out a fake out is pretty cool i always like yeah you know the the beat maker or the they, they're like putting they're trying to sh they you go you think it's going in one way it just completely goes the, a different way i always that's always yeah. cool to me is like you never know what's coming yeah that's the exact uh vibe i was going for so it kind of worked out in my favor that he wanted to use that verse because I, uh it made me want to make it shorter like i still use some of his verse like he's rapping on the intro and then it switches up but yeah man i'm really looking forward to dropping that shit for well, sure based on this conversation you might get a few more you know two beats in one track yeah definitely i mean it, it's also cool to see i will say it is cool to see how the rapper adapts to see if they can do both beats sometimes it exposes them though that it's like oh you're good you're better on a particular beat than another like you didn't change your flow or like it just didn't work that well for you so it's like also kind of risky for for the rapper themselves like they got to be ready to come with both yeah no doubt for sure and the craziest part about this song too is like 
I wasn't expecting him to rap on the garbage beat. I mean, I sent him a bunch of, while I was at his house, I sent him a bunch of beats and let him pick one to rap on. And I was just hoping to get, you know, one song with him on my beats. Um, Hold on. I'm getting called again. It's okay. Are you there? Can you see me? Yeah, I can see. Okay. Let me text. That was my girl. Hold up. Let me text her and let her know. Say literally. Um, Yeah. I was just hoping to get Afro on the song. There was no, there was no way I ever thought I'd ever get on a song with Afro because I viewed myself as like, not on par with him and i'm still not like he is a excellent mc like god damn it hold on <laughs> i'm sorry man hold on give me one second let me text your oh, mac. macbook real quick man this shit fucking everybody wants to call me right now yeah they know you're popular that's why as soon as like it, it's just it's just something you come up with but i will say not even close to the biggest challenges I've had interviewing. Like I've done interviews with people in cars. I've done interviews with people literally ordering food. It cuts in and out. Oh, like man. I've done a <laughs> gas station. I had one at a nail salon um, where like I could hear kids in the background and like there was screaming. Oh my God. Yeah, I've done Jesus. it all. That was a nightmare to edit. And it was like early when I just started the podcast. It was like, I think it was like, probably like five or six interviews in and i was just like i have no idea how i'm gonna make this audible i still released it but like it is not great oh man that's the worst bro damn but um fuck what was i saying again you were saying that you weren't on par with afro yeah like i never would have thought i'd ever fucking rap on a song with them but that split decision um turned out to be a really good one because i felt like i did really really fucking good on it and uh on that particular track i feel like i am on par with him and the song's awesome i, I sent it to him he was like oh my god this is great and i was like word and uh yeah man i'm excited to put that shit out so how do you get in touch with artists like this like do you just reach out to them um, or do they come I to never, you? I never reach out to anybody. What I do is <clears throat> I just post beats and then I wait for them to reach out to me. I feel like that's the best way because you got to think about it this way. These artists are getting messaged all the time to the point where it's fucking annoying, you know? And half the messages are people like, hey, how can I send you beats? Hey, how do I blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So it's gotta be fucking annoying. So what I did was I'm just going to post beats until they fucking see my shit. And, um, yeah, that's how it all happened, man. I was, um, I was posting beats every fucking day. And this is before Facebook bought out Instagram and Instagram had a better algorithm uh you know your shit was getting seen a lot more um but yeah man i remember uh i remember doing uh my first ever beat video where i had the camera on me you know doing the beats yeah I watched and that shit that shit blew up like i was like whoa what the fuck and then underground hip-hop blog shared it and it blew up even more I was like, holy shit, like, I got to do these videos more often. You know what I mean? And um, I remember watching, I think it was like an ill mind. He's a really dope producer. One of his like videos on YouTube saying like, if you want to gain fans and followers and you're a producer, post shit every day. Consistency is key. Post every day for a month and see what happens and i was like okay word so every day before my shift at four i think my work schedule at the time was four in the afternoon so i'd have to leave no it was at five i think so i'd have to leave the house at four catch the public transit get to work but every day i made sure i got up early 
and I try to knock out a beat every fucking day. And um, yeah, man, it fucking worked. I fucking got, I think I went from like a thousand followers to 10,000. Like it was fucking mind boggling to me. I was like, oh, so this shit is simple, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? And then um, I think it also helps that you were doing like you were making good stuff. Like, I think it's always yeah. like also a recognition of like, I'm on the right track. Yeah, definitely, man. It definitely um, helped because I, I've seen other producers do the same thing and they just can't, you know, they can't grab the attention, I guess. I don't know. But um, yeah, man, I was I, I super will- strict about uploading a beat every day. Like, I remember one of the days... I actually went out with my homie and went to this club where our other homie DJed at. And we would go there sometimes, just kick it with them, uh, drink, you know, and just chill. And I remember coming home the next morning, just so fucking hung over and like, just felt like shit. And I was still like, gotta make a beat. And I fucking did. And I made a beat video posted that shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was going to say as well, the, the beat videos with you in them are, are so much better. Like, cause yeah. I, I, I was like, All right, I wonder when you started doing, I went to the first one and you've got like the, the, the visual effects as well on there. But I think the best part is like when we can see you groove with your own beat, like when, when we can see you like mm-hmm. get into it as well and like feel the music i think that's kind of like oh shit like you you love it as well it kind of it kind of makes yeah. you feel like we're in it together in a way yeah and i kind of yeah if you go to my instagram and scroll all the way down you can start to see my first videos where i show myself and shit like that it was on my phone I actually i recorded it off my phone i didn't have direct audio i just let the phone capture the speakers and I blew up doing that. Like, I didn't even have direct audio yet. And then I got direct audio with, I forget, it was some sort of contraption I bought off the internet. I forget. But then later, I was like, I want to step it up. And I got, a, uh, you know, a Canon with a dope-ass lens. And then I just started recording my machine audio into Logic. And then I take the video and the audio is recorded and I line it up in Final Cut Pro. And yeah, so I do that shit every day now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more work than just using your phone for sure. But um, I think it's worth it, man, to have that quality. Well, I mean, you don't really have to tell me because like, I like when I started doing this, I, I had a shitty computer. I had shitty, I had no microphone. Like I just use computer audio. Like we just, it was just so budget. And then the first person I inter- ever interviewed, I was like, I need a microphone. So I bought like a $150 mic. I just remember plugging that shit in. Like it had no, no problem. It, it was just like it is. And I had a beard and the lighting sucked and it was just so shitty, but it's like, that's where you got to start. Like that's where you got to be and you got to progressively like make changes. Cause I think sometimes people think it's like you go all in straight away, but it's like progressively and slowly yeah. you just add stuff on and you, it's weirdly you make it more complicated because it's like, I've got all these programs and all this equipment and this equipment, you got to get it all ready. But like, it is just always a work in progress. Yeah, it could definitely be a headache hooking up new shit, but that's exactly how I started too. Like when I first got that machine, I didn't even have like proper monitor speakers. Like I was using uh, this like $100 uh, Logitech thing and I got the, I saved up more money and got the KRKs and uh, then I needed a an interface you know to use the krk so i got like the cheapest one i could find and yeah you just slowly start building your setup man like i had a shitty usb turntable that was belt driven and then i upgraded to like a fucking monster of a turntable i think it was like a stanton 
something. It was like, I remember it costed like $600. And at this point, like I was comfortable with spending that kind of money on gear because like, what the fuck else am I going to spend it on? That's the way I kind of looked at it. I was like, um, I was like, what the fuck else am I going to do with this money? Like I pay rent, then what? Well, I'm going to spend it on dumb shit, like fucking video games or fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck that shit. I'm going to spend money on shit that can help me grow. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, when, when, cause I bought like a, a new, like $2,000, $3,000 computer. I was like, I need it to edit. I just like, I might as well, like, I agree with you. I might as well spend the money on stuff that I care about. Like, yeah, you know, I might as well buy an NPC. I might as well buy new mics. I'm like, I might as well do it all. I might as well buy furniture for the podcast as opposed to just like random shit. And I still buy random shit, but like reinvesting in yourself is important. And, and it also oh, yeah. just continues to motivate you. Cause like, you know, if I put money into stuff, I don't want to waste that money. So like, I'm going to make it work and I'm going to use it and I'm going to like, I think it just continues to build momentum. Yeah, no doubt, man. And it's so weird because like, you know, you're investing in yourself when you buy these things, even when you first start out and um, it's crazy, man. Like I could just tell like the people around me, like maybe besides my, my best friend at the time, well, he still is my best friend, but back then he was my best friend too. Um, <laughs> he's going to hear this and be like, what the fuck? What are you talking about, man? Um, you know, even back then, I'm sure he was like, dude, what the f He's spending so much money. He's spending so much money on gear. Like what the fuck? But um, no, nah, I'm pretty, I think he thought it was cool as fuck, man. Cause he, he, we both like kind of grew up wanting to rap and i remember when he got his first like actual microphone that wasn't like a usb mic he was like super hype he's like oh, he was so proud of it and I, i'm sure that's how he kind of felt when i was getting more serious and buying all this shit but dude like this is kind of like you, you got to kind of like watch who you hang out with man when you're when you're trying to start up something when you're trying to be successful at something that's like seems kind of far out there to a lot of people, like in my case, like being a producer, people are like, what the fuck? You ain't going to be a producer. You know what I mean? I'm sure I had some friends around me that saw me buying all this shit and thought like, that's a waste of money. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this dude like spending all his money on, man? But yeah, man, it's uh something you gotta like believe in like I'm, I'm investing in myself i'm gonna buy this shit i'm gonna learn it um and yeah man well i mean i agree and for me over 110 episodes recorded like it like when i know when i started whether it's my really close friends or otherwise i know there are people who are like what the fuck are you doing like yeah especially because like the 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 area that i like to talk about is hip-hop and like i'm australian i'm in melbourne i didn't grow up in the states i grew up here so it's like wh who who are you to talk about it and it was just like and i know those that was happening in the background but again like i do this all by myself like i don't have a team i don't have like i just but i do have a few people who are also kind of in similar genres that are also i have people who are I have a friend who's doing really well on YouTube and TikTok, um, Darren Levy, and I've got one of my other friends. He's got a podcast. So those people around you kind of help be like, nah, you can do this. Like yeah. just having those, they're like good checkers to be like, fuck everybody else. Like keep doing what you're doing. Like I see the moves you're making and they're the right moves. So like keep, yeah, like, man. keep going. You start noticing, uh, you start getting that kind of encouragement outside of your circle. And it's so crazy. Like there's actually some psychology behind that because like people around you, people you 
fucking grew up with, depending who it is, people that live in the same area as you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even have to know them, but it could be some regular dude who's working full time and he knows I'm from the same area and I'm like starting to make mo- noise regardless if it's in the town or the internet um they start they start feeling a certain way because they're from the same place and they're like oh well he's from the same place i could be doing that shit you know what i mean because you're closer to them they start feeling a little kind of like off put by it so they don't support you but these other people you know the internet they don't know where you're from they they don't even it's so weird, bro, because they're watching you from a phone. They watch all sorts of shit on the phone. And they see you just make it beats like, oh, shit, that's dope. You know what I mean? I never really got a ton of support from my local town. I didn't. Boom Bap wasn't even a big thing in my town. It was almost non-existent. It pretty much was non-existent. Nobody rapped on Boom Bap beats around my town. And I was in, in Washington. In 2015, like, you know, no one was. It was like, you know, the trap beat, the hi hats, mm-hmm. like that was what was around. So I think it's coming back a little bit. Like bars are coming back. Like the the MC is feels like it's having a resurgence of like what we're rapping about. But definitely between like 10, 2010 and twenty twenty, it was like this trap sound where meaning wasn't necessarily there. It was all about you know what does your voice sound like versus what is it actually saying. Yeah. No doubt. I agree 100%. I'm also, though, on that note, I'm also one of the people that are, are super, like, OCD about how somebody sounds, like, their voice-wise. Like, if they're spitting super dope bars, but their voice is, like, not, like, I don't know. I can't really explain it. But, like, for instance, let's, let's take, like, uh, I don't know how many people are going to agree with me on this, but um, let's take West Side Gun, okay? He's got like, hey, yo, like a kid voice. Yeah. And it sounds so ill to me. I was like, when I first heard West Side Gun, I was like, who the fuck is this kid rapping? And I found out he wasn't a kid. I'm like, what the fuck? He's not like, you know, he's not like super lyrical miracle. The earth is spherical. You know, he's not like, spitting like crazy fucking mind-blowing punch lines but he's like hey yo on the beat and it sounds fucking fresh i'm all about that shit almost to the point where like there there has to be a balance of course there's got to be a balance you either got to be spitting real shit grimy shit to pull that off but you can't be fucking whack and off beat and have like a good voice because then it doesn't work. You got to be on beat and at least saying something. So I've always been that kind of way. I'm like, they could be mediocre MCs. You know, they could just be rapping about guns, shooting people in the face, robbing people. And if their voice is dope, I'm with it. I'm like, let's fucking go. And, um, you know, there's a lot of dope artists that aren't super lyrical, miracle uh you know crazy punchlines that inspired me to get back into rapping because that's one of the things that kind of stopped me before I made uh beats before I started taking beats seriously like I I felt like I was taking too much time trying to think of clever bars and I was like this is I, I can't think of anything clever but um now when I write I notice it's mostly ignorant shit like I write super ignorant like i'm trying to get you like hyped up when you hear my shit when i'm rapping i want you to like get the feeling like you need to go punch your girlfriend in the face or something like or or go run laps around the block or i want you to feel like energized you know what i'm saying so my shit isn't necessarily lyrical miracle it's just basically super ignorant bars fucking um but it has energy to it like so I feel like it works out, man. And I, I see other super successful artists do this. And I'm like, well, shit, if they can rap and not think of super fucking spiritual, miracle, lyrical 
fucking bars and maybe i can too so i kind of got back into it i think um, it's hard when you listen to boom bap first and also don't punch your girlfriend in the face like it's just a he's just saying the feeling so we're not saying do it, it it's no i'm not yeah i'm not saying like <laughs> specifically i'm saying like punch anybody in the face in general like i want you to feel amped up like you need to punch a hole in the wall or something and uh yeah, but man. Going it's to, the type of music I like to listen to. But going to Boom Bap, I think the challenge with listening to Boom Bap is that the best Boom Bap is like, like you said, heavy, lyrical, miracle. Like, you know, when I think of Boom Bap, I'm like, I feel like a big pun. And when I listen to big pun, I'm like, there is no way I can replicate that shit. Like that shit to me is like, like I tried to write an intro for the podcast and I was just like, can't do it. It's just, it just, I couldn't get into the headspace. And I definitely understand where it's like, if you compare yourself to the really amazing artists who can really weave imagery and rhyme schemes into everything, like we talked, we spoke about Sai Hai. Like, mm. if you compare yourself to Sai Hai, it's going to be a really tough day for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I mean it's dope, but it's not my favorite. Um, like I feel like Big Pun is a really good fucking balance because he be rapping like street shit and it's lyrical as hell. But I'm I'm more like I guess I'm more of like talking about oh fuck what happened. I'm more of talking about like oh, fuck how do I explain it? I'm talking about rappers that are just rapping. Like, they're not really saying anything. They're just kind of like, you know, rapping about the diameter <laughs> diameter of the sun and how it correlates with the moon and the stars are sparkling and flowers glow, grow out of the earth because the sun. And it's like, you know, like a super like, I don't know. I'm not really into that shit. It's like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? I sometimes this feel something like I can relate to <laughs> like, sometimes... what the fuck? I sometimes listen to Action Bronson and I'm like, I've got no idea I what I just love Action Bronson. But, but I also listen to some of the shit he says and I'm like, what did I just hear? Like, I have no <laughs> idea what you were saying. Like, you got, like, he's got such a cool voice and a cool presence. And then I'm just like, what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the shit I relate. I love that shit. He'll be like rapping and be like, sitting butt naked in a Lamborghini. I'm like, what? <laughs> Yeah. It's so fucking funny. I love I love that shit, man. Um, but yeah, man, that I guess that's what I really mean is like I don't know. I don't know if there's a word for it, like what nerd rap or some shit. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I feel like the only person who can pull off that style of rap is Jizza. You know what I mean? Like he'll rap about the universe and shit, and it's fucking badass because it's fucking Jizza rapping it. But if I hear some other person... Almost too smart. And like, yeah, it's like interviews with the RZA as well. Like they're like, it's like, okay, you're really intelligent. Like you're like just next level shit. I remember he did, uh, I think the RZA was on a Joe Rogan episode and I think they invited someone, I forget the comedian and the comedian got so much hate for ruining the interview with the RZA. I remember that one. He kept like, he kept uh, kind of interrupting in a way. And the RZA's like super like calm, controlled. He speaks in a very yeah. like deliberate manner. And he, it was like way too much energy for the RZA. And it was like, I want to hear what the RZA is saying. Yeah, dude, I remember that podcast. And I was, I was like super intrigued by what the RZA was saying. <laughs> And then you got a uh, that comedian is fucking awesome, man. He's such a good comedian. He's fucking funny as shit. But like, come on, dude. Why would you invite him to come on with the RZA? It was kind of like Joe Rogan's fault. Yeah, it was you Joe's know? fault. Like, what the fuck, Joe? What yeah, it was because it was man? back to back. I think they did them back to back, and he just stayed mm -hmm. for the RZA's one. And like, yeah, I just it was just a bad move. Like, he should have read who the RZA was. And like, you know, especially to, to hip hop fans, like, it's like, I really just want to hear him because he's 
I think he's got he's got degrees and he's written books and he's like he's just really in tune with a lot of things and it would have been more interesting to hear him just express himself without being cut off yeah. by a crazy comedian who was just he was just amped and excited as well. I would have been excited. Like I'm like the fucking the Rizza. So <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, man, I have his books too. They're fucking awesome, man. They're so inspiring and you fucking learn so much out of those books, man. And like he'll mention other books sometimes. And then I'll be like, I gotta get those books. And then I bought those books and shit. But yeah, dude, it's it's so crazy. Those books. Well, man. But yeah, I feel you on that shit, man. Joe, Joe fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Although he he's needs to probably come back and do another one. Yeah, he does. I don't know. I like I preferred Joe a couple of years ago to like I I, I just stopped listening to, to him. I just got a bit tired. Like Me too. it was just like I don't know why. I guess they just got bored. I don't know. Yeah. I, sometimes I sometimes and I guess same same way here, but like sometimes I'm like, these people are too smart for you. Like he's an intelligent man. He's obviously good at what he does and he's a great interviewer. But like, there are some people who are lit, like astrophysicists, and it's like, I I don't understand what they're talking about. I have no doubt that he doesn't understand what they're talking about. But it's like, the person should that needs to be conducting this interview is maybe someone different. It's like they're just a class above. It's like the weird. It's a weird platform, um, and I yeah. guess it does get them out there and it gets the topic exposed. But it also just feels like. I don't know. I, I know my limits. I'm not inviting astrophysicists on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel you. You know what would have been fucking genius if Joe did this? If he had the RZA with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mm, that would that have been fucking awesome. Because I I love Neil deGrasse Tyson, man. He, 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 when he talks about like astrophysics and shit, it kind of seems a little bit more simpler like you can kind of understand what he's saying but i think that's because he has like that smooth voice you know what i mean like i don't know i think that would have been fucking phenomenal if he had neil degrasse tyson and the rizza fuck it get the jizza on there too have have all three of them on there yeah. well that shit would be joe great. here's here's the here's the advice get all three of them on the show I, i'm sure he could if he really wanted to and oh, i know yeah. and i know he's my biggest fan because like he messed no i the odds of us getting this to joe are very low but I, it's a great idea it's and i like that's something i'd listen to for sure oh fuck yeah dude he could almost leave the room and i just listen to the other three <laughs> yeah honestly yeah <laughs> well man i only have one more question for you uh okay it's uh probably the toughest question that i'm gonna ask it's the only question that i plan on the podcast um but if you had to recommend one album that everybody listens to at least once to get an appreciation of, it doesn't have to be the best album just to appreciate, obviously it cannot be your own work and it can be any genre of music. What would it be? Um, it would probably be my latest out. No, I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> I've had people do I, that. Um, I don't know, man. Fuck. Let me think for a second, bro. Hold on. I, I can, I feel like whenever I get at, ask questions like this i can't think of anything until like later i'm like oh shit i should have told him this one let me look at my spotify and see what i'm listening to see if it sparks i feel like yet. that uh when after the interview when i'm like fuck i should have asked that question yeah man what was the question again like what's one album that that everybody should listen to at least once just to get an appreciation of like, it doesn't have to be the greatest album of all time. I'm not asking for the greatest. I'm just going one that you think that everybody should be appreciating or learn to appreciate. Mm, man, one album. Oh, let's see. Let me look at my library and see if I can think. I can't ever think of shit when I get put on a spot like that. <laughs> It's so funny because um, some people have it like off the bat. They know it immediately. Like they're so quick with their answer. And then most people, which I think is pretty normal, is like, I don't have any fucking idea. I've never answered fuck, that question. 
Let's see, man. Oh, man, that's such a hard question. Thanks. I'm really happy, uh, man. I want to say what I want to say, artist wise. Um, either it's it's got to be either an Alchemist album or a uh, Sean Price album is what's coming to my mind because those are my it's my favorite producer and my favorite rapper. Um, oh man, the Alfredo. <clears throat> no wait, what album was it? I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna tell you guys to listen to this shit because there's some crazy songs on here. Um, I forget what the fucking shit is called, man. Hold on, I'm gonna find it right now. Sorry for taking so long. Uh, now the build up there's is this big. Alchemist album. I really, really fucking liked. It had some. Oh my god, dude, it was so sick. There's this one song on the album that I'm just obsessed with. It's so dope. Well, the whole thing is pretty fire, but uh, it keeps fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the this fans are gonna so be like, dumb. "This better be a good album," because the build up <laughs> to this is huge. <laughs> oh my god! This is, we're building tension. This is what we're doing. We're building yeah. tension. So, like, it could come at Fetty. any moment. The album Fetty by The Alchemist with Freddie Gibbs and Currency. That song, the album is sick. Um, I think it's one of my favorites. And uh, there's a song called Willie Lloyd on there where it's just Freddie Gibbs going crazy on a super ill Alchemist beat. I was like, what the fuck? I love that album. I think pretty much everything alchemist puts out is just like mind bending you know you listen to it you're like what like how the fuck did he make this beat you know what i mean um but yeah man i would say that album and if not that one i would say uh you know sean price any album by sean price he's got like, an amazing uh, voice as well oh man rest in peace I would say uh, Monkey Bars by Sean Price or Mike Tyson by Sean Price. Well, there you go. You got a few recommendations. You got three albums. You got three albums Alchemist, <laughs> Sean P. Um, obviously, Johnny Slash came through. Huge shout out to you, my friend. You're you're absolutely Where's killing it. it. Um, Thanks, you know bro. it's always Johnny Slash, but obviously stay tuned for other singles that are coming out with obviously Jaron Benton, Demrick, you can see him on IG. He's got his website. If you want to use his beats, license them, buy them, show some respect to the artist, please. Um, you can do that on his website. And obviously, <clears throat> you know, stay tuned for any other music, but man, is there anything else you wanted to shout out or plug before we wrap it up? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really sure what to say. Uh, just if you're doing something, stay consistent and don't give up. I love it. And fuck what everybody else thinks. That just Boom. cut out. That just cut out. I'm going to get you to say that again. Oh, I said, uh, I guess one thing I would leave y'all with is, uh, if you're, you know, you're doing something creative and trying to be successful at it, you know, maybe even turn it into a career, um, be consistent. Um, don't give up. Just keep doing that shit and don't give a fuck what anybody else thinks, because I think if I cared what other people thought when I first started out, I probably would have quit. So just don't give up. Even if you're trash, you're going to get better. You got to, they say you got to put 10,000 hours into something to master it. So I agree. Yeah. Love that message. And obviously I forgot, uh, check out his YouTube as well. You'll see beats there and you'll get to see what he's yes, working sir. on. Um, and that's really awesome. But man, as I said, absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, man. Anytime, man.